Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, to the channel IT Simplified. I hope you're having a good time with your family and friends. In today's video in Azure, I'm here to talk about uh, network security groups, also known as NSGs, and uh, how you compare that with Azure Firewall. So this will be on a very high level, and we'll also see some of the configuration steps that we can do within the NSG in Azure portal. So let's start. So both NSG and Azure Firewall is some sort of a firewall. So as we all know that, uh, you know, what we use the firewall for, but in this case, talking about NSG specifically, and uh, Azure Firewall, one difference I can tell you right from the start that NSG is also firewall, but it's a level four firewall. When I say level four, it means that it's only concerned about the source and the destination. So you can allow and deny specific roles uh, within uh, uh, NSG or network security group. Whereas Azure Firewall is L4, level four and level seven. Firewall. It means it can be used or works both at the source and destination as well as at the application layer. So you can do more configuration from the Azure Firewall. And it's also a stateful firewall versus NSG, which is you can say is a stateless firewall. And I will explain that with an example. But important thing, uh, network security groups is a level four, whereas uh, Azure 4 is level four and level seven firewall. That's one of the major difference between the two. Now let's, let me explain this with an example. So say you are a passenger and you go to the airport, right? So you're flying to a specific destination. Uh, you have uh, your boarding pass with you. Short form, I would put and uh, you also have your baggage with you. And then we have a security person. Which is there who is checking your uh, boarding passes and your baggage. So when we look at the NSG, the security guard will only check the boarding pass for you. So basically, if you're flying from destination X to destination Y, he is only going to check your boarding pass, which has that information. He's not going to check the baggage. So you can carry anything that uh, you have in that. And the security guard is not aware for that. And taking the same example in Azure Firewall, the so same thing, you have the passenger and uh, he has his boarding pass and he's also carrying the baggage. Important differences in this case, the security guard will be able to check the baggage. So whatever packet you're sending over the wire, it can intelligently check that. So if it's suspicious packets, it will block. That's one major difference between NSG and Azure Firewall. It can do FQD and filtering. It can do uh, packet filtering, which NSG cannot do. Right. That's one of the major difference. And that's why when I said that it's a level four, it's only concerned about the source and destination. In this example, you're going from point A to point B. Uh, it's only knows that, but whatever you're carrying with you, it's not concerned about that. And that's one major difference between NSG and Azure Firewall. Also, Azure Firewall is a platform as a service. So it's highly scalable. So it means as the traffic increases, because what is happening is it is using scale sets in the backend. We all know what scale sets are. If you don't know, uh, I have a specific video. You can go and check that out. So basically, uh, as the traffic goes, it will add uh, the nodes automatically. So it's a platform as a service. So you don't need to worry about the scalability. Adding the nodes is all taken care of for you in the in the backend. So th those functionalities obviously are not there in NSG. So it's basically if you want to protect your infrastructure at a basic level, NSG will do that for you. But if you want more robust uh, uh, solution, 
uh, highly available solution, Azure Firewall. It also has built-in threat intelligence. which uh, which NSG doesn't have. And it gives you the centralized place to manage everything, right? Which is not there uh, with NSG. And you can apply NSG both at the NIC level and at the subnet level. John, you recommended that you apply at the subnet level, makes the management much more easier. But we'll see actually when we go to the Azure portal. But that's the major difference between a network security group and Azure Firewall. And there's also something what you call application security group. Right, the short form, which is ASG. So basically what happens is that once you deploy your infrastructure within the uh, Azure environment, you can apply NSG at the NIC level and at the subnet level, right? You have those virtual machine, you deploy that in the virtual network and you have subnets in that. But generally in the real world, the things are not that uh, simple and not that clean. So Azure uh, Application Security Group give you the flexible way and dynamic way of applying the rules within the subnet or onto the NICs and you can apply those rules and associate that with the network security group there's some also confusion with what application security group does so that's why i thought i will touch upon that but uh, if you want more flexibility within the network security group and the machines that you're deploying within the same subnet it allows you to logically group uh, those machines on within that uh, subnet and give you the flexibility to apply application security group and associate that with the with the nsg within the same you know, within the same subnet so that's something to also check upon but uh, again it's in level four it's only because about the source and destination it does not do uh, intelligent uh, uh, flexible way of uh, tracking the packets that you're sending so you can send any packet uh, within the NSG, it won't be aware. And Azure Firewall obviously does that, give you the centralized management. It has threat intelligence. It is a highly available platform as a service, and uh, it's, it's scalable. So that's what is the major difference between NSG and Azure Firewall. So let's go to the Azure portal and see what are the options. And in order to demonstrate that, what I have is I have one virtual machine with the name server running and if i go inside this you'll see it has a public ip address and it has a private ip and have specifically not allowed the rdp rule in this uh, virtual machine so if i go under the networking you can see that it has network interface as i said that you can apply this on the nic level or at the subnet level but if you want to see the whole inbound and outbound rules, you can go over here. So you can see I have inbound port rule. Uh, I have the priority name, the port protocol, source and destination, whether it's allowed or denied. Same thing on the outbound. I also have the application security group, which I have explained, gives us more flexibility of logically grouping the machines within the same uh, virtual network and apply those uh, rules to that. And now recently, they've also associated the load balancer. So if you have, uh, if you have uh, a load balancer or application gateway, you can uh, apply those uh, rules also over here to that load balancer, right? So if you want to see the whole list of your, uh, of your rules, what you can do is, if I go into the networking, I can add load balancing rules here or I can go to the server NSG and it will show me the whole list of what are the inbound and the outbound rules, right? So if I want to add an inbound rule, so let's go and add, say for example, add inbound rule. And as you can see over here, I don't have the RDP rule. So right now, if I want to RDP into my server, uh, it is not allowed because it says deny all inbound until unless I specifically assign uh, and allow that rule within the network security group and it has a priority of 65500 so low the priority it will have precedence over the over this number so if i put uh, say uh, 6000 my priority 
it will and allow that traffic it will have residence over so even though it says deny all inbound if i allow that and put a priority of 6000 that rule is going to win so let's go and click on add and open the rdp rule i have either basic i can specify from here but i have much more easier way if i go under the advanced you can see that i have the service and there are certain services which uh, microsoft has uh, listed over here the one that i want to do is i want to allow the rdp connection to my machine so i'll pick the service as rdp the priority as i said the lower the number is going to win so 100 is going to win even though it says deny all inbound and uh, you can give the port i will give it 3389 you can allow rdp connection you can give the description here and click on add the rule is added successfully right so that is done so what we're going to do is now we're going to test that by connecting to that machine so let me go to the server go to connect Download the RDP file. Connect to this machine. I'm going to provide the credentials. Click on OK. And now you can see that it allows me to get into the machine because we have specifically assigned that role within the network security group. So that is the flexibility that I get. Uh, within this machine so let this machine boot up and then uh, i will show you how we can also allow or deny within the outbound rules so my machine is up as you can see now and uh, let me just go back to the portal and let me just show you the outbound rules right now so if i go to the outbound port rule you can see that uh, it allows the internet connection from any port any source and the internet by default is allowed so if i go to my server and let's see i want to browse anything so the internet is allowed by default right so i can go Google, I can go BBC, it is allowing that for me, right? Not a, not a problem. So what I want to do is I don't want to allow the internet on this machine. And what we're going to do is we create a specific rule in this case. So we'll go to outbound port rules, click on add outbound port and uh, go to the source. You can select any IP address. You can specify virtual network. And as you can see that you can also specify the application security group. We have not configured any application security group, but that is what I was talking about. If you want, you can go and uh, go to all services and select application security group, create that, and you can associate that application security group within this NSG. But let me just go and pick any source port ranges, any star, that's fine with me, destination. You can pick any IP address, service tag, and again, application security group. Let me just show you the service tag. So Microsoft has uh, created a lot of service tag. If I go to this, so you can default tags are predefined uh, and you can use this. I think that's very handy. And if I go, you can see that it's a, it's a big list. So if you're running any specific services within uh, Azure, for example, you have a virtual network, load balancers, service fabric, backup, bot services HD insight right you can see it's a quite a big list you can associate that but in this case what we want is we don't want to have any internet on to our uh, this specific server so i want to block this so i'll pick the internet here you can specify the destination port range in this case what i'm going to do is i'll pick any so i'm going to put star we can pick the protocol and the action you can allow or deny i'll pick deny you can pick the priority and uh, you can name this
add this rule and now after this rule is will be created hopefully we will not be able to access any internet on that specific server